my name is uh, Joel Fireman. I'm a captain and test pilot and flight instructor of uh, Embraer. Embraer is the Brazilian aeronautical enterprise. And this airplane, there's a long range capability with high speed and high performance airplane. And with the latest technology we have in the market today, and this uh, airplane that we brought here is a prototype full equipped for test flights. And we have to understand the idea of gusts and winds because some pilots or other uh, aeronautical people can understand as wind shear. And the wind shear mostly depends on several factors. Here the factor is mostly because of a mountain wave. And the mountain wave causes some uh, wind gust and variable wind. So sometimes it's not exactly a wind shear. Meanwhile, I can tell that uh, the winds here are normal like any other island and uh, any other places mm -hmm. that I have been operated. I operate all over the world. So um, I'll go back to Wednesday when you arrived. You arrived on runway 02 yes. with the tailwind. Mm -hmm. um, how was that and what was the, what was the tailwind speed? Uh, the tailwind speed was around the 10 knots tailwind, but this airplane can land with 15 tailwind. Okay. And the landing distance is uh, enough because uh, this runway pavement is a concrete and with a uh, very rough uh, and uh, we have some scratch and then make uh, the braking action very nice even if you have light uh, showers or rain so we can land with uh, oh. tailwind hmm. and of course the airplanes must have the capability and performance to land and break and even uh, go around if the weather is not good due to low, low visibility or low clouds and then to, if they decide to go to other place to alternate, our mm -hmm. plane can return, can reach back Africa, for example, because we have a long range capability in okay. this airplane. So you could come here from Cape Town and get back. And get back. So we don't depend on Ascension Island. So um, yesterday I watched you do four circuits, was it? Yeah, four circuits yes. and approach just to evaluate the winds. Mm. And then the fifth, we did a full stop and land. Yeah. And then I changed the crew. Then we did a new takeoff, then we make a touch and go, okay. landing, running to zero. Then we came for a full stop again, then I changed the crew again, then I took off, running to zero, did a touch and go, and then a full stop. So it was uh, five uh, full stop landings and four go arounds to check the environment and the winds. So we can really tell you that it was, was nice and everything went okay. What, what was the maximum wind speed? Uh, we have uh, some moments uh, 25, gust 35 knots. Gust 35? Yes. Okay. And so uh, some at, moments... At what height were you with the 35? At uh, around 300 feet. Okay. There's a close, already close to the threshold, mm. getting close. And, but it's okay, it's not a big deal. Only some light bumps and corrections. Our airplane, there's some advantage because of the wing shape, give a lot of controllability for the pilots. Mm. Yesterday when you had the 35 gust, did you continue with a landing or did that necessitate a go-around? No, we landed. You landed? Yes, with the we landed. 25 and gust 35 is okay, it's not a big deal, it's not a problem. And the airplane control very well, the pilot can control manually the airplane very well. And uh, if the pilot takes so long to control the airplane and feel that it's unsafe, then he can perform a go-around. Mm. But in this case, our plane did very well. So there's no need to go around. So all the go-rounds that we did yesterday were planned. Yeah. We planned to, do the, to perform the go-round because the engineering was collecting the data. Was there anything at all during your test that gave you cause for alarm? No, nothing at all. Nothing. Only good news I have, I observe here. It's, uh, I don't understand what such a taboo we can say like that, maybe. Mm. Because, of course, there are some seasons you have more wind, more gusts, mm. but like any other place. And then, if overpass the limitation or recommended uh, crosswind of uh, any other airplane, you must evaluate the situation to land in a runway 02 with tailwind. So, if you were to operate from this airport, um, you would look to use runway 20? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to land run to zero always. 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 The, um, this, this plane, um, where is the most difficult airport that it operates at? 
Well, one of the most difficult but airports. But most challenging, yeah, I should most say. challenging. Yeah, we can say, and we need a special training. In Brazil, we have a short runway, 1,200 meters, mm. in uh, Rio de Janeiro city, yeah. Yeah. and this uh, airport is surrounded by mountains. We have the Sugarloaf Mountain with a cable car in front. Yes. So that uh, runway is, is a short runway, have some strong winds, cross winds, and also when you take off or when you go around, you have a mountain very close, like uh, four miles in a runway heading. Mm. So when you reach 200 feet, you have to immediately turn left. 45 degrees to avoid the mountain. Much better. And so with, with, with that runway in Rio, you say is more challenging than here? Yes. Is it? For sure. And, and you operate there every day? Yeah. Yes. All the people, every day we have a routine from Sao Paulo to Rio. We have a shuttle service, like uh, more than 10 flights a day, taking people there in and, and it's out. Fine. It's fine. No Very problems. Fine. Yeah. All, the only problem when you have low visibility due to rain, or low clouds, due to then you have low ceiling limitation, then this is any other port like any other place. Yeah, now our visit is a demonstration and test flight mm -hmm. for all any other customer interested in using Embraer to operate here. Okay. So it's an independent uh, test and demonstration flight okay. from the commercial department from Embraer, mm -hmm. like a marketing demonstration 